Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Ramzi Ali dear scholars so far as we have discussed about civilization policy and we have uh, uh, decided that uh, uh, policy be conducted by rule or by discretion and we have also highlighted the time inconsistency of discretionary policy in this video we are going to discuss a case study inflation targeting rule or constrained discretion introduction since the late 1980s many of the world's uh, central banks including those of australia canada finland israel new zealand spain sweden and the united kingdom have adopted some form of inflation targeting Sometimes inflation targeting takes the form of a central bank announcing its policy intentions. At other times it takes the form of a national law that spells out the goals of monetary policy. For example, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Act of 1989 told the central bank to formulate and implement monetary policy directed to the uh, economic objective of achieving and maintaining uh, stability in the general level of prices. The act conspicuously omitted any mention of any other competing objectives such as stability and output, employment, interest rates or exchange rates. So here we have one of the main question to answer should we interpret inflation targeting as a type of pre-commitment uh, to a policy rule. Not completely in all the countries that have adopted inflation targeting, central banks are left with a fair amount of discretion. Inflation targets are usually uh, set as a range, uh, an inflation rate of 1 to 3 percent, for instance, rather than a particular number. Thus, the central bank can choose where in the range it wants to be. It can stimulate the economy and be near the top of the range or dampen the economy uh, and be near uh, the bottom. In addition, the central bank is sometimes allowed to adjust its target for inflation at least uh, temporarily if some exogenous events uh, such as an easily identified uh, supply shock uh, which pushes inflation outside of the range that was previously announced. So in the light of uh, this flexibility, we have here one of the main questions uh, to discuss what uh, is the purpose of inflation targeting. Although inflation uh, targeting leaves the central bank with some discretion, the policy does constrain how this discretion is used. When a central bank is told uh, simply to uh, do the right thing, it is hard to hold the central bank accountable because people can argue forever about what the right thing is in any specific circumstances. By contrast, when a central bank has announced uh, a specific inflation target or even uh, a target range, the public can more easily judge whether the central bank is meeting its objectives. Thus, uh, all those uh, inflation uh, targeting does not tie the hands of the central bank. Uh, it does uh, increase the transparency of uh, monetary policy and by doing so makes the central bankers uh, more accountable for their actions. So let's uh, conclude our uh, uh, case study here. Uh, the conclusion here, uh, this uh, Fed Bank uh, or we can say the Federal Reserve or Fed has not uh, 
uh, adopted uh, an explicit policy of uh, inflation targeting although uh, some commentators have suggested that uh, uh, it is uh, implicitly um, targeting inflation at about 2% one prominent advocate of inflation targeting is Ben Bernanke, a former professor of economics whom President uh, Bush appointed to succeed uh, Alan Greenspan as chairman of the Fed Reserve. Bernanke took over the job uh, in 2006. In the future, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, may move toward inflation targeting as the explicit framework for monetary policy. So this is all about the case study inflation targeting rule or constrained uh, discretion. So see you with another video. Ciao.